In this short video, we'll be talking about interleukin-6, which is a hallmark pro-inflammatory cytokine. It has four helical structure, 184 amino acids to be precise, and it is secreted by cells like macrophages. And upon bacterial infection, these in cytokines could be secreted. Also, cancer cells are known to secrete interleukin-6. Now, let's see when these interleukin is secreted, what it can do. It is capable of inducing liver to produce the acute phase protein, such as C-reactive protein, SSA, and haptoglobin. Also, from the liver, uh, serum amyloid is secreted more, along with which can basically cause amyloidosis. There could be fibrinogen, which is secreted by the liver. Now, lipopolysaccharide from the bacteria is a potent trigger of IL-6 uh, secretion. So there are toll-like receptors which are present on the macrophages, which recognize these lipopolysaccharides and lead to a signaling inside the cell. That lead to secretion of IL-6. Also, fibroblast, keratinocytes, all can see and endothelial cells can secrete IL-6 upon stimulation by interleukin-1, which is another pro-inflammatory cytokine. If you want to know more about the interleukin-1, you can get the video on the I button. Now, interleukin-6 can trigger B cell and T cell responses. Interleukin-6 was first known to be a, a triggering factor of B cell differentiation. So B cell is a target of interleukin-6 and B cell is also a producer of interleukin-6. The current research shows that. So initially it was called B cell differentiation factor. Uh, it turns out that there are specific uh, trans signaling regime uh, that B cells undergo. B cell doesn't have the interleukin-6 uh, receptor, but it has a co-receptor GP130 and in a moment it would be clear what is the trans signaling regime. Anyway, T cells express interleukin-6 receptor and the co-receptor so it can receive the interleukin-6 and lead to interleukin signaling. Due to the consequence of downstream signaling, raw gamma T, a master regulator of Th17 uh, cell fate is upregulated. So the T cell is now polarized to a Th17 state and this particular cell is highly associated with inflammation. So it's a potent driver of inflammation and has been reported underlying the pathology of several diseases. Now, it can alter bone homeostasis. Inside the bone, there are two major cells, osteoclast and osteoblast. So it turns out that interleukin-6 interleukin can be received by osteoblast because it has interleukin-6 receptor, which triggers a molecular pathway and lead to the expression of rank L. Rank L and rank mediated signaling can basically uh, trigger osteoclast to differentiate into a mature osteoclast. So osteoclastic activity gets increased. So basically osteoclast are responsible for degrading the bone or eroding the bone. So overall the bone homeostasis gets altered when interleukin-6 levels are high. And this is really important in context of rheumatoid arthritis because in the joints there is a huge inflammation in rheumatoid arthritis. One side the osteoclastic activity is high, other side the synovial uh, uh, fibroblast also secrete interleukin-6 and they can trigger the osteoclastic activity. All lead to a vicious cycle of inflammation. Now let's talk about the interleukin-6 signaling pathway. Here is the classical signaling pathway. Here you have interleukin-6 receptor and GP130. It binds to interleukin-6. Both these receptors are important to initiate the signaling. So after that there could be MAP kinase mediated pathway. That means there are downstream regulators like RAS, RAF, MEK, ARC, all these things lead to downstream activation of gene. So also, JAK-STAT signaling pathway can be underlying interleukin-6. Now this is only the classical signaling regime. There are trans-signaling where there is a soluble interleukin-6 receptor. This is not membrane-bound. This is a soluble receptor which can bind to the GP130 and can trigger the same signaling. 
Also, there is a transpresentation pathway where a cell express IL6 receptor, another cell express GP130 receptor, and together this trans interaction can lead to a signaling in the other cell. So all these things impinge upon the same signaling pathway, mostly JAKSTAT or let's say MAP kinase pathway, and the consequence is production of several cytokine genes and proliferation genes. Okay, now let's why do, why we need to understand the signaling in bit more details because many aspects of this signaling pathway is targeted by therapeutics. So it turns out that all these pathway uh, are targeted by specific antibodies such as anti-IL-6 antibodies which binds to the IL-6 receptor B secreted or B membrane bound and then there are another class of monoclonal antibodies which is known as IL-6 antibodies. So IL-6 bind to the interleukin ligand not the receptor. So whatever these regimes are, but both lead to uh, inhibition of the signal initiation by the interleukin-6 receptor. Anyway, there are also downstream modulators as well, such as JAK inhibitors like tofacitinib or uh, ruxolitinib, and there are STAT inhibitors which can basically prevent the downstream signaling pathway. So there are therapeutics which target the upstream receptors and there are therapeutic target which targets the downstream signaling modalities. Now let me tell you that there are many diseases where interleukin-6 uh, inhibitors are used as a treatment. For example, rheumatoid arthritis, giant cell arteriosis, cytokine release syndrome or uh, cytokine storm, Castleman disease, etc. So in all these cases, there are uh, interleukin mediated signaling which make the situation worse. So uh, tocilizumab is basically a monoclonal antibody against the interleukin receptor, uh, interleukin 6 receptor. And this blocks the signaling mediated by interleukin 6. Also, there are other uh, 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 drugs such as Sariluzumab. This particular drug also target the interleukin 6 receptor. There are other monoclonal antibodies such as uh, Siltuximab that is uh, interleukin 6, the ligand uh, targeting monoclonal antibody. Whatever these modalities are, all of them target some aspect of the interleukin signaling pathway and inhibit the signal initiation by these receptors or ligand. So that is how interleukin 6 is very important in a clinical context. So I hope this video was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in Instagram page. See you in next video.